Hi, I'm Shao. Today I would like to discuss uh, a subject that has been discussed to death over the past uh, two decades or so, which is uh, the practical uh, implications of sensor size. Sensor size has always been a charged uh, issue because uh, it, it is uh, intertwined with uh, pricing. Uh, not everyone can afford a, a large uh, format uh, camera. Uh, entry level uh, uh, cameras and lenses, which are uh, more affordable, uh, uh, use a uh, uh, slightly smaller uh, sensor or sensors. There have been uh, some uh, heated uh, discussions about this uh, subject. Um, in this uh, discussion, I, I would like to put all this uh, pricing uh, issue aside. Look at it from a more uh, uh, neutral, maybe uh, slightly scientific uh, perspective. It is uh, a well-known uh, fact that uh, the larger the, the, the sensor, uh, the more it uh, offers in uh, three departments. Uh, the first one is uh, noise, where uh, uh, large sensors have a cleaner image at uh, uh, high sensitivity values. Second is uh, dynamic range, and the third one is uh, color depth. A website or a testing uh, laboratory with the name of uh, DxO Mark, uh, use these uh, uh, three departments to uh, evaluate uh, the performance of um, image uh, sensors for, for a while now. Uh, however, I, I would like to argue that those uh, three uh, variables are not very important in a practical uh, sense uh, because um, they only make uh, a very small uh, real life differences between uh, different uh, uh, sensors. Uh, it might sound uh, a little bit uh, strange, but I think that uh, differences in dynamic uh, range are uh, overstated. Uh, when we look at a uh, high contra highly contrasty uh, uh, scene, and uh, we want to capture it onto the sensors, uh, the, the, the ability to do it is uh, limited. All uh, film stocks and all uh, digital uh, sensors are quite limited in the dynamic range they can uh, uh, capture. In practice, you want to make sure that uh, surfaces uh, that uh, reflect light uh, are, appear uh, in, a, in a manner where you can still uh, uh, see details in them. Uh, which means that the, the areas on the sensor that capture those uh, surfaces are uh, not saturated uh, with light, or at least not saturated on all um, uh, three color channels. Specular highlights or uh, uh, light sources that emit light, um, 
will never be uh, within the dynamic range because the difference in brightness be between them and the, the rest of the scene is uh, enormous. You can't really contain uh, everything uh, within the sensor's uh, dynamic range. Dynamic range is uh, also intertwined in uh, exposure. Uh, there are two uh, ways to expose an image. The first one is uh, what we always uh, used to do, which is uh, make sure that the, the subject of our photo is uh, exposed uh, correctly. Uh, with a small uh, error margin. So we trust the meter inside the, the, the camera to estimate uh, the, the needed exposure and to calculate uh, um, aperture, uh, shutter speed and uh, ISO, on, or one of them, to reflect that uh, required uh, exposure and uh, make sure that uh, the, the, the subject of our uh, image is exposed uh, correctly or uh, naturally. The second uh, approach is to uh, expose in a manner that maximizes uh, dynamic uh, range, uh, which often means uh, underexposing the image by uh, a stop or, or, or two, uh, sometimes uh, even more than that, in order to make sure that all uh, highlights in the, in the scene are, are contained within the constraints of the uh, sensor. Uh, the second approach also uh, offers the, the, the advantage of uh, using uh, lower ISO sensitivity which uh, maximizes the dynamic uh, range of the, of the sensor. The question is uh, which uh, approach or which uh, principle to adopt when uh, shooting. Uh, I'm a lazy photographer, so I, I do not like uh, adjusting uh, the exposure after the fact and uh, I especially detest uh, um, you know lifting up uh, uh, shadows uh, so uh, I choose the first uh, approach of exposing correctly in the first place uh, this allows me to, to also um, uh, choose the uh, right uh, shutter speed and uh, aperture that are appropriate to my uh, composition or to the story I, I want to tell uh, through photography. Uh, when you expose uh, in a way that maximizes the uh, dynamic range, which means uh, you, you always uh, underexpose the, the image to some extent. Uh, the, there is a lot of uh, work involved uh, in, in uh, developing or processing those uh, images uh, after the fact. And uh, it's, it's all fine, but uh, you have to remember that uh, lifting the shadows uh, for some reason uh, does create some uh, artifacts. I'm not talking about uh, noise, I'm, I'm talking about the gradation uh, within the, the, the shadows, which uh, sometimes appears uh, uh, quite uh, contrived or artificial. 
This uh, reduces the overall contrast of the image and uh, in my opinion objects or surfaces that look uh, black to our eyes in reality should, should remain uh, black in the final uh, uh, photograph. So uh, all this Shadow lifting is uh, something that uh, I, I try to avoid. The difference in uh, dynamic range, uh, assuming that we adopted the, 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 the most rigorous uh, exposure uh, process, uh, is quite uh, small. Nowadays, uh, the maximum dynamic range you, you can get uh, on, a, on a full frame uh, camera is uh, about uh, 13 or 14 uh, stops, while on an APS-C or a micro four thirds camera, uh, the typical uh, dynamic range is about uh, 12 to uh, 13 uh, stops. It's not a huge uh, uh, difference. Um, objects that uh, emit uh, light or, or uh, specular highlights uh, will still appear blown out uh, in, in both uh, uh, cases. So the differences are small. Now, uh, if you expose uh, for the subject uh, or, or let the camera calculate the, the, the correct exposure and uh, apply the JPEG uh, uh, processing, uh, you lose uh, a stop or two of uh, dynamic range uh, compared to the uh, previous values I, I mentioned and the differences between uh, uh, sensor sizes uh, becomes uh, even smaller. It really depends uh, a lot on the processing uh, inside the camera. Now, uh, noise really depends on uh, the size of the pixel, not on the size of the sensor. Larger sensors have uh, typically a little bit higher uh, pixel pitches uh, compared to uh, smaller uh, sensors. It is not something that is uh, inherent uh, in the sensor, it's just uh, a choice uh, the manufacturers uh, made to make their uh, cameras more uh, competitive in a market that uh, values uh, resolution uh, for some uh, reason. The pixel pitch is really uh, affecting uh, the dynamic uh, range uh, too, uh, because the larger the, the pixel uh, pitch, the more uh, light that uh, pixel can uh, collect before it becomes uh, saturated, uh, considering everything else is uh, equal. Uh, lower resolution uh, cameras have an advantage in, uh, in dynamic range and noise uh, compared to high uh, resolution uh, cameras. And that is true for uh, each uh, side of, uh, of a sensor. Leica, in some of its recent uh, cameras, offers a uh, um, process that uh, combines the uh, input of uh, adjacent uh, pixels in a process that is called uh, uh, pixel uh, binning. 
And uh, indeed, when uh, using uh, uh, a few pixels uh, grouped together, the, there is an increase uh, in the dynamic range and a decrease in, uh, in, in noise. Of course, it comes uh, on the expense of uh, resolution. This is the, the, the trade-off we are talking about. Anyway, there has been a big improvement in uh, noise uh, reduction uh, algorithms, uh, whether inside the cameras or uh, uh, using uh, uh, raw processing uh, software. So, uh, you cannot really see uh, a big difference in, uh, in the amounts of uh, noise between uh, sensors of uh, different uh, sizes. The third uh, aspect of uh, sensor uh, performance is uh, color depth. And, uh, this is something that uh, I, I do not uh, understand because in, the, in a raw file, bit depth of uh, any pixel is uh, comparable regardless of uh, the sensor uh, size, unless you shoot at a very high uh, speed and uh, then the, the, the bit rate uh, or the bit depth. Uh, decreases. I, I, I cannot uh, say anything about the, the difference in uh, colors uh, between uh, uh, different uh, cameras or between cameras with uh, uh, different sizes of uh, sensors. Uh, I think that color really depends a lot on processing or post-exposure uh, processing. Basically, the, the bit depth uh, offered in the, in the raw file uh, ensures that uh, gradations are uh, smooth and uh, that, that you can achieve uh, almost any color you want uh, for, from the captured uh, uh, raw file. Sensor size does affect uh, the, 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 the final result in two uh, major ways. Sensor size does affect uh, the, 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 the final image uh, you can get uh, in, in two major ways. The, f the first one is the nuance that is uh, captured on the sensor. Uh, larger sensors can, uh, can capture uh, nuance or tonal uh, gradations in a better way than uh, smaller sensors. In the same way that uh, medium format uh, film can uh, uh, capture more nuance than uh, 35 millimeter film. Um, I, I think there is no dispute uh, about that. Now this uh, nuance can be in uh, brightness or uh, exposure, can be in uh, color uh, tones, and it can be in uh, the, the fall of, of uh, sharpness. But uh, all these uh, factors together create uh, an effect of uh, space. On the larger sensors, uh, scenes look uh, bigger, vaster, more spacious. Uh, in the final image than uh, when, when the same uh, scene is captured by, by, by a smaller sensor. Uh, this has nothing to do with uh, resolution, which uh, dictates uh, perhaps 
the, the amount of uh, fine detail uh, you can capture in an uh, image. Uh, it, it is a global uh, effect that is uh, most of the time evident, especially when uh, there is a distribution of sharpness uh, is affected by uh, depth of uh, field. The second advantage of uh, large uh, sensors over smaller ones uh, has to do with uh, the enlargement uh, needed to uh, achieve the final uh, print size or, or viewing uh, size. With larger sensors, uh, the required enlargement is uh, smaller. For example, uh, enlarging uh, a full frame uh, image to a 10 inch wide print requires an, uh, an enlargement factor of uh, 7. Uh, for uh, an APS-C sensor, the enlargement uh, factor needed to uh, achieve the same uh, print size is uh, about uh, ten and a half to eleven, and uh, for uh, micro four thirds, it's uh, uh, around uh, fourteen or fourteen and a half. Uh, and the more you enlarge uh, the image, the more evident uh, different uh, artifacts uh, become in the, in the final result. Uh, for example, uh, grain or, or noise that is uh, more apparent on uh, images made by small uh, sensors. Uh, fringing is uh, another example. Uh, fringing uh, on uh, larger sensors appears uh, thinner than uh, fringing uh, on an equivalent uh, image made by a, a smaller uh, sensor. Same, is good. Same goes for uh, spherical aberrations, a more forgivable uh, when you use a larger uh, sensor. The enlargement uh, factor uh, affects lens design too, because um, in order to avoid uh, you know, conspicuous uh, artifacts in uh, images made from uh, smaller sensors, the tolerances have to be stricter in designing and uh, producing, uh, manufacturing those lenses. Uh, for example, uh, uh, lenses made for smaller sensors have to be more uh, resistant to light dispersion, uh, to reduce uh, fringing or chromatic aberration, which, uh, as we have uh, endlessly discussed, uh, deprives the images of a sense of uh, depth or uh, poppiness. Uh, while uh, lenses made for, for larger sensors can allow some uh, more chromatic aberration, spherical aberration, uh, field curvature, etc. It will be less apparent in the final uh, results. The nuance of gradation and the um, enlargement uh, factor are the two aspects uh, that, that, that really give uh, a larger sensor an advantage. The, the disadvantage of uh, larger sensors and uh, specifically uh, 35 millimeter and uh, medium format uh, sensors is the size of the lenses. Uh, again, I'm not uh, 
uh, talking about uh, pricing because uh, this is uh, an artificial uh, factor. It, it relates to uh, supply and demand and uh, does not really reflect the cost of production. The size of the sensors affects, of course, the diameter of the projected uh, circle of uh, the lens. And uh, lenses made for large sensors have to be larger and use uh, more glass than uh, the counterparts that are made for uh, smaller sensors. Uh, and uh, that has a major effect on, on the lens uh, weight and uh, lens uh, length, especially lenses uh, that, that use uh, low dispersion glass. It has to be more uh, curved, uh, must uh, allow for thicker uh, glass elements which uh, makes them uh, quite a bit uh, longer than uh, lenses uh, that do not contain this uh, uh, type of uh, glass. That begs the question, can uh, full-frame lenses uh, be made uh, smaller? Uh, because these uh, large uh, lenses are uh, inconvenient. The, the experience of using a camera with a large, uh, long lens is uh, quite different from using a, a, a small lens. Uh, for example, uh, this is the Nikon uh, 28 mm f1.4, which is uh, quite a chunky beast. Compare it to um, this um, Taipok uh, 28 mm f1.4, which is uh, a lot uh, smaller. The difference in uh, using those lenses, especially in a social uh, setting, is uh, quite... Uh, these large lenses are quite uh, intimidating to, to people uh, and uh, they tend to draw more attention and uh, of course, uh, when you approach someone uh, with a setup like this, uh, you, you people tend to change their behavior. There are two uh, ways that I can think of to decrease the, the size of uh, lenses. Uh, at least the size of uh, uh, wide and uh, normal uh, lenses. Uh, telephoto lenses uh, have to be long because they require uh, a large uh, space uh, between the front element and uh, the, the back element to produce this uh, narrow uh, uh, angle of uh, view. But for uh, wide and uh, uh, normal uh, lenses, uh, things are uh, easier. Uh, one of those ways is uh, to uh, avoid uh, low dispersion or ED glass. As I said before, uh, low dispersion uh, glass is uh, low density and uh, low refraction uh, index. In, in. So to achieve the, the required uh, bending or focusing or dispersing of uh, light, you need a, a more curv curvature in, in 
such uh, lens elements. And uh, that makes those elements uh, thicker and requires uh, more space inside the, the, the lens uh, barrel. Uh, by avoiding uh, such uh, glass type in the design of uh, lenses, you can uh, keep them uh, a lot smaller. Uh, lenses uh, such as uh, this, um, 35 millimeter f2, made by uh, Like Lens Lab, are uh, quite small. They still contain uh, eight elements, but uh, those elements can be thinner because they are high refractive uh, index and uh, they are very efficient in bending the light. Uh, this will also allow uh, a better perception of uh, depth uh, on the viewer's uh, uh, side because uh, allowing some uh, chromatic aberration to pass uh, through the glass and the heat uh, sensor uh, does increase the 3D pop or the uh, rendering of uh, depth objects in inside the, the frame. The second solution for decreasing the size of uh, full frame and above uh, lenses is removing uh, parts that are not required for the optical function of uh, the lens, uh, which basically means uh, uh, transferring all the electronics uh, out of the lens and uh, into the camera body. Uh, this can uh, make the, the lenses uh, significantly smaller. For example, this uh, Nikon 35mm uh, uh, f2 lens uh, does not contain a, an autofocus uh, motor inside it. Uh, instead, the autofocus motor is located uh, inside the body uh, so uh, it drives the focusing group inside the, the, the lens uh, uh, through a screw drive. It is not the only uh, small uh, uh, lens uh, in, in this series. In fact, uh, all the D-type uh, series made by uh, Nikon and uh, uh, by, by other manufacturers uh, too are uh, rather small compared to modern uh, lenses that, that do have uh, an autofocus uh, motor in them. It, it may be true that uh, autofocus motors that are located uh, in the lens are faster and, uh, more uh, efficient and can change their direction of uh, rotation uh, more uh, smoothly. But uh, modern, uh, especially stepping uh, uh, motors that can be located uh, in, in the camera body can make a, a quite a good uh, job of it, even if the uh, the, the, the autofocus uh, group is uh, driven by a screw from. See, the, the camera filming me now is the Nikon D780, uh, which is a, a quite uh, an interesting uh, DSLR camera. And the lens filming me is that uh, 35mm f2 D-type. And uh, I think that the functionality of uh, autofocus uh, 
is uh, quite acceptable, uh, even in uh, continuous autofocus, even in uh, video. Uh, sadly, it's the only DSLR camera that uh, can uh, do this uh, trick. This setup uh, shows the feasibility of uh, this idea. Uh, of course, removing uh, the autofocus motto from uh, lenses uh, will not make them only uh, smaller. It will also make them uh, cheaper because uh, they, they do not uh, have to contain all these uh, electronics and uh, it will make them uh, lighter because uh, those uh, motors uh, add some uh, weight to the to the lens especially in uh, wide uh, aperture lenses where the focusing uh, element is quite uh, heavy and third it, it, it might make the lenses uh, cheaper because uh, uh, you do not uh, have to pay for an uh, autofocus motor with each lens uh, you buy. So uh, once you bought the camera, all such lenses uh, will be will autofocus. Right. So uh, in summary, large sensors uh, do uh, offer some advantages, uh, especially when it relates to the enlargement uh, factor uh, where you need to enlarge the image on the sensor to a lesser extent uh, when, when you use a, a larger sensor to achieve a, a certain print or viewing uh, site. Larger sensors uh, are also more uh, nuanced in their uh, rendition and uh, especially uh, in uh, the distribution of uh, sharpness where uh, depth of field plays a, a part in the composition. Uh, but larger sensors also have a disadvantage, uh, quite a uh, significant uh, and uh, heavy disadvantage, uh, pun intended, uh, in the lenses that are, have to be larger and uh, heavier and less uh, convenient to carry and, and, and use. Thank you for watching and uh, see you again soon.